Okay, so in this video, we want to come up with a way to find the derivative of a function. So let's look again in the xy plane. And suppose we have a function whose graph looks something like this. Let's take an arbitrary point to the curve. So say so this is the point x. And correspondingly, the y value is f of this point, so f of x. And at this point, again, assuming the curve is smooth enough, it will have a unique tangent line. And recall that, by definition, the slope of the tangent line to the curve at this point is the derivative of the function. And this is what we want to find. So the slope of this line is, again, by definition, the derivative of the function, dy over dx, at this point. Now, how do we find the slope of a line on which we only have one point? This is the major problem here. If we have two points on a line, then we can find the change in y and the change in x, and then we can find its slope. So the major problem we have to overcome here is how do we find the slope of a line on which we only have one point? We're missing a second point. So the idea is, well, let's take a different line. Let's take a second line that cuts the curve at this point and at another point. Now we have a line with two distinct points on the curve. So now, with these two points, we will be able to find the slope of this line. Now this line is clearly not tangent to a curve, because a tangent line only touches the curve at that point, around the point of tangency. So this line, we will give it a different name, as it cuts through the function in two separate points. We call this the secant line to the curve. And again, secant, because it cuts through the function at two distinct points. And we now want to find the slope of this line. Well, we need to label this other point. Well, it's a different point than the original one, so it has a different x value. Now think of getting the x value of this point by starting to the original x and adding to it a little something, say h. So assume here that h is some positive number, so if we add to x h, just the right amount, then we obtain the x-coordinate of our second point, so x plus a little something. And correspondingly, since the curve is given by y equals f of the x-value, and here the x-value is x plus h, and the y-value is f of x plus h. And now we have on this line two distinct points, so we can easily find its slope. Again, the slope of a line is the change in y over the change in x. Well, what is the change in y? Well, second point for his point, so it's the larger y value, f of x plus h, minus the smaller y value, f of x. So delta y is f of x plus h, minus f of x. And now we must divide by our change in x. Well, it is the larger x value, minus the smaller x value. But if you do x plus h, minus x, the x's cancel, and you're left with h. So now we have the slope of the secant line. But our objective was to find the slope not of the secant line, but of the 
tangent line. So the question is now, what do we do with this? Well, think about this. Age here can be viewed as another variable. We can vary age in any fashion that we want. So you can imagine that if we want the secant line to become the tangent line, then we have to let this point get closer and closer and closer to the original point of tangency. But how do you push this point closer and closer to this point? Well, looking at the x values, you have to push this x value closer and closer to the original x value. Well, this is done by letting h get closer and closer to zero, right? How did we obtain this point? We took x and added h to it. But if we take h to be smaller and smaller, this point will get closer and closer to x. So this point will get closer and closer to the original point of tangency. And you can visualize this. If this point approaches the original point of tangency, then the secant line, as this point moves in closer and closer to the original point, the secant line will move closer and closer to the tangent line. But if the secant line gets closer and closer to the tangent line, then the slope of the secant line must also be getting closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line, therefore the derivative. And this is the trick. So to find the derivative of the curve at x, we must take the slope of the secant line, so f of x plus h, minus f of x over h. And again, this is nothing but the change in y over the change in x of the secant line. And by letting h approach 0, then x plus h will be approaching x. So we're pushing this x value closer to this one, pushing this point closer to this one. Therefore, we're pushing the secant line onto the tangent line. So this slope as h approaches 0 will lead us to the exact slope of the tangent line. And this is how we can find the derivative of any function. And that's it.